Welcome to this Killick Explains video and welcome to the third and final part of my Key Terms for New Investors series. My usual caveat applies, if you're a more established investor, you should know all this stuff. And if you don't, have a sneaky view of this video and the two before it and you'll remind yourself. All right, now these three terms coming up fall into the scary but important category. Scary if you're a new investor, really important, and let's break them down and just understand why it's best to have some sort of grip of what they mean. So number one, market cycles. Now, markets do go through cycles. Over time, if you look back at stock market history, we've had you know, booms and busts, as they're called. And they can be quite big changes. When the market decides to collapse, the collapse can be, well, if you go back to the early 1970s, as much as two thirds. Come more recently to the financial crisis, COVID, all right, dot com boom and bust, um, you're talking maybe 40 to 50%. The good news is that the markets have always, so far, the past being no guide to the future necessarily, markets have always recovered and gone on to bigger and better things. But what this means is you need to be aware that market cycles exist. Stocks don't just track up or down in one direction for long, okay? But the important lesson to take away is nonetheless, don't try to time the market. By all means, someone who's been investing for a while will be able to spot when markets are getting toppy or when they're getting cheaper, all right? And that can be useful because it can make for better entry and exit points from individual positions. Okay, but it's really important not to engage in what's called market timing. In other words, trying to catch the top, all right, or the bottom of the market by dumping stocks when you think they've become expensive, because you might be wrong, piling in when you think they're at their rock bottom, because they might carry on going down, all right? So it's really important to avoid destructive behavior, as I call it. Uh, history is a good guide to what markets might do next, and as, by the way, is human psychology. So what I'm trying to say here is market cycles, it's important to know they exist. It's important to use history and the way humans behave, irrational exuberance, over pessimism, all right, to understand where we are within a particular cycle and potentially take advantage of that if you're adding to a portfolio or taking cash out, perhaps you're in the drawdown phase of life, for example, but don't be a slave to trying to time peaks and troughs. Number two, DCF. Now this is the most technical term I'm probably covering in all three videos, discounted cash flow. Now in this short video, I don't want anybody to think they've got a master discounted cash flow, but it's a really important concept. The, impo the important bit of it I wanna get across is that a pound now is basically worth more than a pound tomorrow or received in a year's time. Why? Um, for the simple reason that if you had a pound now, you could invest it earn at the minimum an interest rate, right? So that when the pound comes in in a year's time, you'll have more than a pound to compare it to, all right? It's the idea that you can earn interest and that interest compounds, okay? So what that means, if you're looking at companies, is that you need to be able to look as somebody who's analyzing companies at the profits or the cash flow they can generate going out into the future and just recognize that the pounds you're gonna get in five years time are not as valuable as the pound you're gonna get now. All right, now in order to match them up, by the way, um, experts, analysts do something called discounting. In other words, they reduce cash flows back to an equivalent value today so they can price the company and generate a share price. So this, this concept is key to how shares are priced, but more importantly here, it's important to understand that this has an impact on the way that different types of stock behave. All right, growth stocks are more volatile for the simple reason that they're gonna generate a load, of, a load of revenue, profits, and cash flow in the future. But if market conditions change, they're gonna get hit harder, all right? Because those future promises are worth less. Value stocks, on the other hand, will tend to be a bit more consistent in the way they behave. Not so exciting on the upside, not so exciting on the downside. And as a function of the way they're valued using this discounted cash flow technique. In other words, as an investor, think about what kind of stock am I looking at? Is this a company that is basically being valued on promises in the future? Which doesn't mean you don't buy it, you need to be aware of it. Or is it a company which has a much steadier profile all right, and is less sensitive to changes of things like interest rates in the market? Number three, impairment 
and this is the final term in this video. Now, this is quite a technical sounding firm, uh, term, if you like, and it basically covers the idea that if a company hits trouble, one of the first pieces of evidence you'll see, watch out for the word, appears in the media, appears on websites, is impairment. And it occurs where basically a company's carrying value, its book value, if you like, uh, what it's declaring as assets in its accounts and balance sheet, suddenly get overvalued. In other words, the company is suddenly worth less, all right, because market conditions have changed than perhaps its reported numbers imply. And where that's the case, everything gets marked down and you get what's called an impairment charge. Now, this sounds a bit technical. All I'd say is when you see the word impairment, just be, be careful because it can be an indication that management haven't got things right. They've been, they've been buying too aggressively when the market was peaky, if you like. It can signal a change in the cycle. All right, so it's got a narrow implication, which is a particular firm that suddenly has to impair assets might have overpaid for them in the past. And you know, that can be a sign of early, early warning trouble. Or it could be that more widely, if you're seeing the term, the sector or the market is starting to change. Conditions are getting tougher. Firms are having to mark down assets they bought in the past. So there you have it. Bit of a chewy video there in some ways. Market cycles, discounted cash flow impairment, but quite important to have an awareness of all three terms. If you want to find out more, I've got other videos on all those topics, uh, killick.com forward slash resources. Uh, my How to Invest in Equities guide covers them. Okay, not in a huge amount of depth. You need to go to the videos for that, but that's sitting next to me. Again, same place. And our quarterly magazine, Confidant, often contains articles about equity valuation, market conditions, and so on. And again, that's available in the same place.